Uh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the week six edition of the Prop Shop Show here on Roto Grinders. I am Britt Devine, joined by the head of the Prop Shop himself, Mr. Will Priester, Chief Justice 06. Uh, Chief, it's uh, it's been a very good NFL prop betting DFS lines, whatever you want season for me so far. Uh, I'm looking to keep it hot going into week six. What's up, dude? I'm doing good, man. First of all, you know, this week, uh, Britt is not fresh off the operation table, so oh. he, I, I, he's doing a lot better. And uh, we've got producer Devin here filling in for Steve. Steve is a little under the weather because the Mets got put out of the playoffs, so he couldn't make it. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I'm glad to be here, man. Another another week. Uh, and you know, I, ironically, I didn't have the best week last week. Um, I had so many double ups this weekend, Britt. Like I just couldn't crack the 10x code. Like just double ups, double ups, three out of fives, double ups. But you know, everything was still worked out. Um, you know, we we had to, had, had a, a real good slate for college football, ironically, on Saturday, and so I got some 15x cards that I hit on Saturday, which made up for the the disaster on Sunday. You know, when your favorite kickers, at least for me, when my favorite kickers don't come through. It's going to be rough. What happened but, to McPherson? Well, the coach didn't kick a field goal. No. That's what happened. They went for it on fourth down. And, I, you know, but uh, – and then, of course, Harbaugh decides that he's actually going to kick field goals again. And uh, Justin Tucker had an amazing game. But I'm not worried about it, Britt. And, and this may seem funny. Sometimes I rejoice when a prop doesn't hit. Because that means they're going to keep it on the board. So there's no way they can keep McPherson away from us after he missed last week. We should get that one back on the board later in the week, and I'll go right back to over one and a half McPherson. Yeah. Young Way Koo didn't come through this game. Just just a weird game. I'll go right back to Young Way Koo even against the 49ers. So I'm uh, I'm excited. Another good week ahead. And uh, if you've been following Britt on Twitter, I mean, he's already got – uh, an, over a dozen, slightly over, at least at, at the time of the post, slightly over a dozen picks that he's got loaded up. I've got my few as well, so should be another good week. Yeah, Chief, I got more. I, I'm, I'm a, I don't want to say I'm addicted to them, but I guess I just like hitting the lines early before the uh, the books change them. Because as we do this show, right, on a Tuesday night, for those of you, you that watch later or on the podcast, and uh, we're flying blind. There are no uh, – the sports books don't have prop bets. The overseas sports books – don't have uh, any NFL props. They have a couple out for Thursday. But we're basically just going into this blind prize picks, underdog, monkey knife fight. They be, they set the line sort of themselves ahead of time. They catch up to them a little later in the week. But it's fun to try to out-game the prop sites, Chief. So uh, yeah. with all that said, uh, let's jump into Thursday night. I was talking to our producer, Devin, uh, before the show. And I, don't, I generally don't like to force plays on uh, a given night unless i am particularly in love with them uh, and price picks gifted us a couple of plays because i wasn't into too much uh but they lowered curtis samuel was uh, over 50 terry mclaurin was at 58 or something like that these guys just got lowered prior to going to the show chief i just yeah. jammed in a bunch of tickets with both of these guys using a couple of my other favorite plays but as it stands right now uh, I think we can both agree. I'm not expecting Dotson to play. Uh, I think Logan Thomas is very questionable at best to play in this game as it stands right now. We'll, we'll have to see how the injury reports go, but even if he plays, that's fine. Diami Brown, he, was just, he wasn't really on the field too much. He caught a couple of deep passes, but these two are looking like some pretty nice overs, even against Chicago. Yeah, for sure. Um, for Thursday night, it's very simple for me. Um I am still going to take Carson Wentz over passing yards for what it's worth. Just, and, and that's a that's more of a numbers play against the grain a little bit. Chicago isn't giving up a lot, but that's more of a style of play than anything else. At 227, I'm still willing to take the over here, especially after Ron Rivera goes on national TV and says that the quarterback is the reason they're not winning games. Uh, and, and it was taken out of context, but still, uh, you know, I think – I think Carson Carson Wentz is going to take that personally and go out, but that's that's just a gut call. Uh, in terms of how I think he's going to approach playing, he's still throwing the ball at, on average about forty times a game. So the, the, I, I'm I'm taking the over there, uh, and then of course, 
Terry McLaurin at 54 and a half feels, dare we say free, Britt? I don't want to say free, but it feels like a big discount. Let's call it a good taco. Um, and then we have <laughs> Samuel as well at 47 and a half. I will say I like Samuel at 47 and a half. I also want to see where his reception prop comes out at. Like if we get him at four and a half again, I'm probably taking the over. Like he was at four and a half on Sunday, and uh, I, I absolutely took the the over on that. But those are definitely my favorites because, you know, in terms of the Thursday game, we've got Darnell Mooney, we've got Cole Komet. I will say this, uh, field goals made, I'm probably going to take Cairo Santos over one and a half. Like that's going to be my run back. Um, Santos is actually kicking field goals, and this is a team they should be able to move the ball on and probably not get in the end zone a couple times. So uh, I like Santos, field goals made. And then we don't have um, – any really good like uh, um, uh, completion props or attempts props for passing. So I'll wait on that to see where Fields lands. Uh, he, he's definitely a guy I think we'll be able to target for those. We don't and we don't have fantasy points either. So the pr- prize picks has doubted back on us a little bit this week. Uh, I check I did check Thrive and Underdog. Thrive only had I think three props uh, for Thursday, and and that was pretty much it. And. Uh, and then pri- not prize picks underdog had uh, a handful as well. They already had some for Sunday and stuff like that. But uh, the Thursday game, they, they still have Wentz for future for reference. McLaurin is at sixty one and a half on underdog, and Samuel was at fifty and a half, but they've removed him at uh, since since earlier today. Yeah. So if you're going to play these, it definitely looks like prize picks at the point is is the. The particular site to play them if you're watching live and make sure to check all the sites if you're watching uh, a little bit later and always make sure right the board gets a lot bigger for football as the week goes on if you're ever trying to catch anything join the prop shop on the roto grinders discord you just link your roto grinders account your free roto grinders account to your free discord account go to the prop shop there are a bunch of people talking props etc which sites have the best lines all the time Uh, join that for free and uh, start making money with the rest of us. Uh, so with Thursday out of the way, Chief, uh, I've got – so what I've got today, I've got 13 or 14 props. I, I the, Actually, if you add these two in, the two receivers from Washington, uh, that's probably up to 15. I like the overs on both Samuel and McLaurin as well as you. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've got an underdog specific play that I think the line is way too low, and then I've got a monkey knife fight – uh, I got a, a fantasy point ladder play. We're all going to play together before they remove it on us. So <laughs> guys, get all, get, all, get, all the sites, get all the sites queued up, get underdog ready, get monkey knife fight ready, get prize picks ready, and play along with us. Um, because I would imagine, uh, as usual, most of these lines will change uh, against us as the week moves on. Uh, we're going to do it a little bit different today. We're going to do passing yards. We're just going to go down. Passing yards, rushing yards receiving yards. Um, Chief loves passing yards. We're going to see if he still likes any of those. We don't really discuss our plays too much before the show. So let's see what Chief likes. I got a couple. I know Chief will always have some. Have they adjusted them too high for you, Chief? Well, and that that's something we did talk about before the show today. Generally speaking, like a lot of these have been adjusted. I will tell you right now, I think my favorite <clears throat> passing yard prop on the board it. And it's going to sound crazy. I actually think it's Kenny Pickett at 220. They're going to have to throw the ball to keep up with the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are going to score points. Like, that. that's the reality. And so you look at what happened last week with Pickett. One of the things I think we don't have to worry about with Pickett is they're going to let him go out and sling the ball. Like, this is rebuild season now. Ben, ben is gone. Trubisky's been benched. He went to Buffalo in a big-time loss. They barely scored any points. He threw for 327. Mm-hmm. I got to think 220 and a half is very achievable in a spot where I feel like they're going to have to throw the ball. And then we've got – and if, if you look at his receivers, we've got Deontay at 55 and a half, and we've got Pickens at 50 and a half. Now, ironically, those guys are slightly, ever so slightly lower on underdog, at least when I checked earlier today. Uh, nope, Deontay is a little bit higher. And Pickens is a half yard lower. So he's a full yard lower. He's at 49 and a half. Either way, Pickett's still at 220 and a half. I like that a lot. 
That's probably my favorite passing yard prop as of right now. I can tell, I can already guarantee you, Britt, that I'm going to have a game stack of this one. I, I can tell you that right now. I'm going to have Pickett, uh, Kenny Pickett, George Pickens. Oh, sorry. We, we don't want to, uh, we're in the passing yard prop, but I'm going to game stack this one for what it's worth. Five. Just deep, show. Just you, you can talk whatever you want. <laughs> so, so I'm for sure going to go Pickett, Johnson, Pickens, Mike Evans on the other side. And then it's either going to be Brady over passing yards. And <coughs> excuse me, I, I may teeter totter with Chris Godwin. Right now, I'm feeling like Brady over 280 and a half is still a little bit low, like just a touch. Um, so if I go that direction, that's what it will be. Um, or if we get Ryan suck up, I'm probably going to go suck up over one and a half field goals. And so I'll have Pickett, God, uh, Pickett, Johnson, Pickens, Evans yards, and then suck up over one and a half field goals. So that, that's going to build somewhere up in there. So if you get that and, and, and I got a feeling Mike Evans, he's at 70 and a half. I'm wondering if he may tick down a little bit, like. 67 and a half. He was, and he half. was 62, Chief. So pr- prize picks, they're moving the lines quicker. He was he yeah, came I know. Out 60, he came out at 62. I got a bunch of that. I don't have any at 70.5 yet. But if you're gonna game stack, I had a nice game stack in the prop shop. Uh, I went Gino with three pass catchers, Disley, Lockett, and Metcalf. And then I ran a couple different like one-off props with them. I hit them all, and I know the one that I posted in the prop shop hit. So a bunch of people hit that 15x with me uh during the the happy hour that they run on Fridays on prize picks. Oh yeah. This sounds like a this sounds like a fun fun game stack to keep in Listen, mind for that chief. I'm telling you, 15 when the 15x comes out on Friday, I, I guarantee that's going to be in there along with my kicker 15x for the week. It, it will be the, in there for sure. I've told the wife there's I got a, I need an hour on Fridays. Don't bother me because I'm just I'm just putting <laughs> all the I'm just sending a bunch of 5 5x five, five flex plays on prize picks. Uh, oh, all, yeah. all right. <laughs> so, oh, so yeah. You like, you like Pickett. I like Brady. Those aren't a couple. They didn't make my list. I added Pickett. I think the Pickett play is a nice one. Uh, I'm going to certainly add to that. Uh, any other passing yards you like before I throw a couple of mine out there? So so this is where it gets tight, Rick, because remember I said they're starting to adjust these lines. So I always want to target bad teams, right, teams that aren't stopping anybody through the air. Kirk Cousins at 270 and a half. Like, I think he can get 300 on Miami. But we've been getting Kirk at like 250, 255. Like now we're at 270, and it's like, uh, you know, do they pull away enough for him to not have to pass the ball enough? Do you get what I'm saying? Because Miami, they got Skylar Top. Like, it's t- I don't think Teddy's going to play this week, and I am going to monitor that. But that's what I'm, I'm kind of afraid of. I'm, I'm on the fence because I feel like they could pull away, and Kirk just doesn't get there because of the game script. They're just ahead in the game. So um, I'm going to monitor what happens. Here's what I will say. If Skylar Thompson is, is at quarterback this week, then some of these good quarterbacks with high totals like Kirk, I might be inclined to just take the under. Because they may he, he may only have to throw the ball a half. And then they'll just let Dalvin Cook and, and Madison run wild the second half or mostly run wild in the second half. Another guy that I actually really like this week, and this one isn't over. I'm going to rock with Daniel Jones at 200 and a half playing against Baltimore. Baltimore is still giving up tons of yards through the air. I know Danny Jones hasn't really been eclipsing this number like Tennessee 188, Carolina 176, Dallas 196, Green Bay. But I, I got to think, man, that they're able to move the ball through the air against Baltimore. And so, you know, we're one screen pass away from Saquon picking up. 60, 70 yards for him on one throw. So I like that one quite a bit. Uh, another one that I really like, believe it or not, Zach Wilson against Green Bay. I don't I don't care, but I, I don't trust Green Bay's defense enough. So Zach Wilson at 210 and a half, I'm going to be taking the over on that. Um, and then this one is just because for whatever reason, the the Buffalo Bills don't run won't, don't really want to run the football. And this is high, okay? We've got Josh Allen at 300 and a half passing yards. Britt, I still want to take the over here against Kansas City. Like mm-hmm. I just I, they're throwing the ball too much. Uh, and this is and this is a game where it should be 
a little bit of back and forth. Like we saw yesterday, Mahomes comes out in the first half, kind of stakes up the joint. And then in the second half, you look, and he's still pretty much pushing over the number because they're slinging it down the field. And that's what Buffalo wants to do. At 300 and a half, I'm still not afraid of the over here. Uh, so I, I think because of the competitive nature of the, of the matchup, uh, I, I'm going to be in on 300 and a half passing up. I've got that Allen one already, so I like that one. You pair with Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis is 55 and a half. That's one catch. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so you pair with that or Diggs. We'll see what the uh, the rest of the receivers come in for Buffalo. But I'm in agreement in that basically what should have been the AFC championship game last year between the Chiefs and the Bills, uh, both quarterbacks, well over 300 yards. So I, I have no problem doing that. Uh, a couple of ones, so and I, I like the Zach Wilson one too. I bet that as well. Those aren't the ones I wanted to bring up on the show though. My favorites, uh, I'm going right back. All, all, all of you that tailed me on the 15X, we're going right back to Geno Smith this week at 255 against Arizona. Gee, Arizona's horrible. This game, this game is going to be a shootout. This, oh Geno my Smith God. Is playing, this game is going to be like 35 to 30. Neither team can play defense. Both offenses are good enough. Geno is, he's playing as one of the best quarterbacks in the league right now. Uh, so I, I love Gino over 255 and a half again. I've got Stafford over 257. The only good part of Carolina was their defensive coordinator, and they fired him along with the head coach. Uh, so this 257, Stafford's managed to go over this, and his unders are just under it. So I'm pretty okay hitting the 257 right now. Uh, you compare that with Cooper Cup pretty easily, in my opinion. As long as Cooper Cup's below 100, uh, you can take an over on Cooper Cup uh, pretty much any time. And then the other guy I'm on is uh, Jimmy G uh, at 230. Jimmy's been slinging it. He's, He's been slinging it. it. And we saw what Tom Brady did, right? Like, now I know the 49ers are going to be able to run the ball. But he's slinging it, and this is a good offense, and he's got really good weapons. And if Tevin Coleman's going to come in and be like a fourth wide receiver catching the football, uh, th this looks like a pretty good offense. So I like Jimmy G quite a bit. You can I don't know if I'm, I would pair Jimmy G up with anyone in particular, uh, but you can pair up Cup with uh, Stafford. You can pair up uh, – I like DK. They, we'll talk about this in the receiving yards. You can play him with Lockett too, play him with both of them uh, to get some yeah. extra correlation. Uh, but I like DK specifically. I think his line's a little lower. That's where I stand on passing yards, Chief. Well, let me say this. This is what I'm plugging in because it's just not out right now. Baker Mayfield is not playing this week. P.J. Mm -hmm. Walker is going to be the quarterback. And they're playing the Rams, and the Rams haven't been great. Now, our team is like, like what, 189? I got to think he comes in, yeah, around 189, 190. I think they're just going to kind of set him at a reasonable Baker line. Like, I, I'm hoping, Britt, that they kind of – I'm hoping we get him around 175. I think that I don't think they're going to give him to us there. But just be on the lookout for P.J. Walker props. I, I will say this. I think this team is going to start moving the ball down the field a little bit now that rule's gone. I, I'm just – I'm telling you. I don't think it's going to be exactly the same. So with P.J. at the helm, uh, not that he's some elite quarterback. I just think we're going to play differently. And, and so I, I think I don't think he's coming in anywhere over 200. Uh, so with Walker, I'm going to be in on his props this week against the Rams who haven't been able to stop too many people. Yeah, all right, let's, let's go to rushing yards. There are some wild rushing yard lines out here that I like. Uh, this is um, – receiving yards have been my favorite, but rushing yards, I've got three. Uh, over I already this. know one, and we haven't even talked about it. I, I well, know one for – Well, I got I got a couple on scores. I got one on scores and odds already. So the one I put on scores and odds is Brees Hall, 57 and a half. Uh, Green, Green Bay ain't great anymore. Uh, no. This is not – they. you can run all over them. Brees Hall has 17 and 18 rushing attempts. This is a ridiculous line for Brees Hall, uh, 57 and a half. The sports books will probably put him at like 61 or 62. I'll, you know, if you have access to the sports books, I would take that too. But oh, yeah, Brees, Brees Hall is on for my sure. list. Big time. Big time. Yeah. Brees Hall for sure. Uh, Kenneth Walker opened at 52. Oh my gosh. It was a 52. Listen, free. Listen, <laughs> I, I've been waiting all day to talk about when I saw this come out on the board, I said, wait a minute. How much you put He's, on – or did you move it to 58? Because I've been betting it a lot too. Listen, I, this might be my favorite prop of the week, to be honest with you. And, I mean, man, my favorite one of the week just bit me in the butt last week. 
finally, Travis Etienne got 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 a lot a fair amount of carries and mm-hmm. he popped them for one big play. Neither here nor there this week. I just think if Kenneth Walker to me is just like um, our guy out of Houston, Pierce, yep. he's gonna get pretty much all of the work. And they're facing Arizona, a team that can't stop anybody. I got to think this guy can pick up 60-plus yards in this game. So Kenneth Walker, one of my favorites of the week. I'm with you on Brees Hall at 57. Uh, And then this one, Britt, this is just one where I'm going to take a shot. So I think Najee Harris is just a little bit too low. Like, this team is bad. Don't don't get me wrong. I hate hate Najee Harris. I hate Najee. Look, P- Pittsburgh is not good, okay? But at 45 and a half for pretty much their workhorse running back, pr- pretty much their guy, I, I just think it's a touch too low. Like, the only thing I think would hold them back is if they just – the game script, which which is why I like the passing game so much. But I, I think I sprinkle Najee and one at 45 and a half. It's just – I think it's too low. Um, so, yeah, that's where we are here. And then I think I'm going to take the over on Leonard Fournette this week at 63 and a half. I know it's been ugly. Okay, His game log is terrible. But Pittsburgh has been getting gashed on the ground, Britt. Like, wait, for, wait for the Russian receiving to come out. Well, yeah. We'll, but, but typically the Russian receiving is higher than both of those combined, which is why sometimes I'm, I'm inclined to just take one or the other, the rushing mm-hmm. or the receiving. If it's anywhere close, I'm with you. Rushing and receiving is going to be big. Uh, a couple others I was on. I was Chubb was like 80-something. He's up to 95 now. That's a lot. So I don't know if I'd – anything on Chubb, I would play the under. But I'm, I am I got enough in the over when it was a little bit Oh, lower. buddy. What, what, do you, Britt, what do you got? If you refresh, they literally just added Justin Fields rushing yards All right, for Thursday. 40 and a half. You like that? He's hit over in three straight. We're close. I, I want to see if he gets down to 38. Like, that's one we can wait on because I don't think – but I, I will have it in a card for Thursday. And, Britt, let me just say, too, I know the object of the game, right, is to win every card. But cards that cards that I feel good about, like let's, like Justin Fields, I feel good that he goes over 40 and a half. I don't feel like it's as close as a, um, a lot, as we, as we would say, to Kenneth Walker, right? Mm-hmm. So, but I feel good enough to put him in a card. So if, if they watch us build our cards, and I think you build the same way somewhat, you can tell pretty much the car, the, the plays that I'm like, yeah, I'm going all in on because I'll build like every card I have five flex, I'll have three of the same and I'll switch out two or four of the same and switch out one. And that, that way I can still be profitable. And if the, if he goes over 40 and a half, I'm good. If he doesn't, I feel confident enough in Brees in, in the Brees Hall prop and Kim and others that I feel like I'm good enough to hit a double up. So I'm not trying to hit double ups. I'm trying to hit a 10x. I'm trying to hit the three x uh, if I'm going in a power. But but guys that I feel good about, maybe the line's just off. Like Najee, I don't trust Najee, but I think the line's a little bit too low. So I'll play him in one with my other four props that I really like. And if he goes over, it's like hey. It's a big day coming. If not, I'm 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 anticipating that my other four props are going to carry us home. Yeah, yeah. So how I play generally almost all the prop sites is I am mainly a two pick player, so I'll play picks of two, right? So I I have Brees Hall with like 15 different players already. I have yeah, you're round robin with like yeah. yeah I, I do that, um, and then I'll do the 10x or 15x on game stacks is basically how I play a lot of these. Uh, that that's my preferable style is how I, so to me i i tell my wife winning or losing a thousand dollars feels as bad as winning five thousand dollars feels good to me chief that's that's just how like i hate losing but but winning i i expect to win right i don't expect right. to lose, so i hate i hate losing and the two pick it works for me right that's how i like to play i don't like going for the big shots but when they do that 15x right on fridays prize picks has been doing I go, yeah. I go for it with the game stacks to get the extra correlation. That's how I like it. Well, yeah, let me say this too, Britt. And I, I've told everybody in the prop shop this as well. I play two picks as well. But 
I don't play hardly any every now and then I'll play a three pick power if I'm feeling like okay, this is these are like locks, right? But what you get from me is five flexes and two pick powers. That's pretty much all I play. Me too. That, that's pretty much all I play. So uh, I and, and the reason for that, and I kind of talked about this in the prop shop today, which and I'm glad we're having this talk too about profitability and bankroll management. I pretty much have a standard unit size. Uh, that unit size is 100. I don't veer off from that too much. Like in the prop shop, a lot of times you'll see me with a loose change bill. And that's just because I just like even numbers in my bankroll. And so, um, but then if I hit a loose change bill, then I kind of have another one, another one. So it, it's okay. But um, the reason for that is I, I want as many chances as I can to be profitable, which is why I don't play a whole lot of four pick powers. Because if I miss one, as I explained today, let's say you got $500 invested. You play four, four, four pick powers, and you miss them all by one play. Then you, you just you, you just lost five hundred dollars. Yep. Or and so what I like I go up to the five flex. If I go four for five and four of those, and I hit one ten x, I'm fine with that. You know, and that that's just me uh, because I, I want every opportunity possible to be profitable. Uh, you know, like I told them when you're doing this full time, um, you know, you want as many chances as you can to make money. And so taking shots on the three pick power, the four pick power, it sucks when you get one wrong and your return is, is not as good when you get, you know, four out of five and it's like, dang, one, one guy away, but I'll take that every day to keep the money flowing in the household. All right. Yeah, Brent, back I, to you, I totally agree. I want to throw back uh, one more rushing yard prop I'm on is Jeff Wilson. Uh, he's gone over 72 and a half. In four straight games, uh, Tevin Coleman's there. Tevin Coleman's just basically taking away Debo Samuel's rushes. Uh, Jeffrey Wilson is still the workhorse. It's against Atlanta. Uh, I like the 49ers. Uh, I'm going to add a bet on scores and odds for sure this week uh, as a spread pick. Uh, Atlanta's covered in every game so far this year, but this is the week This is the week it stops. Uh, I like Wilson to go over the 72 and a half uh, pretty easily. So those are my three rushing yards. Walker and Brees Hall seem almost free. Walker specifically, because he's going to get basically all the work. And then uh, Wilson and Brees Hall. Uh, let's go to receiving yards, Chief. I've got, let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I've got five. I've got an underdog specific play that's a receiver. And then I want to throw my monkey knife fight play out here. So what are a couple of receivers you're looking at first? Well, you know, a lot of it's going to be pairs. So I already talked about the Pittsburgh guys, just because I think that, you know, they're going to have big games. I'm going right back to Justin Jefferson against Miami, by the way. Even at 89 and a half, Brett, he, he should crush the secondary. I mean, that, that it feels high until you're watching him run down the sideline for 40 yards in one play. And then you're like, oh, we're almost there. He just needs a couple couple catches here and there. So Justin Jefferson, man, at 89 and a half, I love that prop. Um, that's a big one for me. Another, This is another sneaky one, Britt. Now, I don't think – I think we, we might be the only guys on this prop this week. We might be, and that's perfectly fine. What if I told you I think Jacoby Myers is a really good play this week at P and a half? I mean, I, he was, really. He was 47 and a half. I've already played him a little bit, Chiefs. So. Yeah. Jacoby, I mean, 50 and a half, get it, gonna get the volume, pretty much the best receiver in their wide receiver room. And Mr. Zappi looks to be like he's gonna be slinging it around. At 50 and a half, I like, I like Jacoby Myers this week uh, against Cleveland. Uh, also, Another guy that I really like this week, and I don't want to call this one this one sneaky, okay? I don't, I don't want to call this sneaky, but I got to think Michael Pittman gets back to being Michael Pittman this week. At, at 62 and a half, um, I, I really like that prop. And I know Alec Pierce has been beastie. At 48 and a half, he might even be, he might be an even better play if he continues to get this kind of volume. But at 62 and a half, I still think Pittman's the alpha dog here. Um, I'm expecting him to go over. And then once again, a bad, bad, bad defensive game. Marquise Brown, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, heck, Zach Ertz. Well, like, let's just take overs. And Chief, I know Ertz it's only letting me put five in, Chief. I can't, I can't put any more players on. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then, then my last one, that's one, and you've already talked about this one. But I think at this point, the Rams are committed to giving Cooper Cup the ball pretty much every play. 
you see over if, if he, anything near near under a hundred. Like I, I think you just take overs at this point. So uh, I'm taking Cooper Cup at ninety five and a half. Going to take the over there. I seem to have broken my screen. Uh, Bryce, <laughs> down. Oh, there we go. I think it's going to finally go. Away. Yeah, I like cups. So I'm I'm definitely on all of the ones you mentioned. Uh, I think they're all good. They're not even the ones I wrote up that I think are some of the best ones. So we have, a, I think, a, we have a lot of receiver props for you guys to target this week. Uh, I'm going to go through mine really quick. Uh, again, if the Thursday night, well, they they keep adding them during the show here. So they add a couple ancillary pieces. Definitely Samuel and McLaurin overs for sure. Uh, I still think Godwin and Evans, they both got bumped from where they were originally. But they're what? Evans is 70 and a half now. I think he's higher on a couple other sites. Where is Mike Evans here? Uh, yeah, 70 and a half and Godwin's at 62. I think you can take the over on those. I think DK Metcalf at 67 and a half is an easy over. You can also take Tyler Lockett at 72 and a half. Just take Gino, take both of them, take Will Disley when he comes up. You got four picks already. You only need one more, Chief, because they're all going over again. <laughs> <laughs> the Marquise Brown yeah. Marquise Brown, too. Brown is my other scores and odds play. So I wrote him up. He was one of the first things I looked at this week. Over 70 and a half. Uh, this is going to be his last game without DeAndre Hopkins. He's gone over this in three straight. Uh, the other one was 68, just under it against Las Vegas. This is the no defense game special. Uh, so 70 and a half is pretty easy for Marquise it. Brown. Absolutely like that. Uh, I like Gabe Davis over 55 and a half. If you like that over 300, oh, oh, Chief, you've got to have Gabe Davis over you already, and You half. already know what I'm doing. Like that, That's going to be another game stat. Uh, I, but I, I want to see what these Kansas City guys come out because they just played last night. I got to yeah. think MVS comes out at probably 50 and a half to 55 and a half this week. Like he yeah. torched that 40 and a half number last week. No way he comes out that low this week against Buffalo. I think he'll be around 50 to 55 and a half. Um, they may even drop Juju Smith Schuster for us, which Juju's. I mean, I've missed on him two weeks out of the uh, two or three weeks out of the the five. I can't remember how many weeks I've missed, but um, we'll see where he comes out at. Um, Travis Kelsey did nothing in the yardage department last night and got four touchdowns. That that won't be the case this. That week. had to be the lowest lowest fantasy points for four touchdowns in a game in NFL history. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he will need yards this week. I'm assuming he's going to come out where he's been on seventy to seventy and a half. I'm going to be inclined to take the over on that. Like yet again, in in this particular this type of game, uh, I'm going to be inclined to take the over. All right, I got a couple of bonus plays for everybody here. So there's one on under. It's not on Prize Picks yet. So I don't know what the prize picks line is going to be. So get underdog open, get monkey knife fight open. The monkey knife fight one, I can guarantee you, if a co- just a couple of you play it along with me, they're gonna re- they're gonna change that pretty pretty quickly. The underdog one also as well. I don't think will last too long because I just think it's a little too low for an every snap player. Uh, Chief, which one which one you want to hear first? You you gotta get get your favorite underdog play up, Chief, because I've got a pair for you for a two pick. Oh, I'm up you ready. Right now. All right, what, what's your what's your scroll through and find something for the people to pair this with? Yeah, you don't have to, it's, it's Kenny. Pitt, like Kenny. Yeah, oh yeah, I already looked at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How about Evan, Kenny, 68 and a half? Pick it? Yeah. But Kenny Pickett's my guy this week across all sites, 220 and a half over. All right, I'll throw I like Evans at 68 and a half, even lower than price picks currently right now. If you so if you're looking yeah. for a place to play Mike Evans, it looks like uh, underdog is a spot right now, but my favorite is going to be Rondale Moore at 42 and a half. Dude played oh, basically, yeah. he played basically every snap this week, had 68 yards. He gets these uh, very easy catchable balls, great after the run, uh, after the catch against Seattle at 42 and a half, Chief. I couldn't believe this. Eight uh, targets, pl- seven receptions. I have played oh, a bunch free. of combo. Yeah, this is free. So get on this right now, Chief. Start hitting it. Guys in chat, start playing that with some combos. Uh, I can guarantee you by Wednesday morning, this will not be 42 and a half anymore. So that is like my underdog special of the week. I don't know why that's so low. Uh, I want to go to Mon- doesn't even have the lineup, which, which should tell you all you need to know. What if it comes out at like 40 and a half or something? Oh, I God. Think. I mean, <laughs> you're going to have to stop me, man. I, I yeah. might nuke it. 
So the Rondell Moore hire is definitely my favorite uh, underdog play. And on Monkey Knife Fight, I hope you guys have this open on your phone or computer. Uh, we're going down to the no defense game, Chief. We've got a, la a ladder fantasy points play. You ready to play along with me here? I'm ready. So we're going to the stat shootout. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 24. Wait a second, Chief. What? Chief, is this a minute? This is a all right. Everybody, go to this right now. Oh god, this was yes. at forty something. This was at forty seven. Uh, we're for some reason they have this at twenty four and a half. Uh, we're playing for a hundred dollars. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna max this out right here live. Go do this right now, everybody. Oh my go to the, gosh! Go to the fantasy points, max out. Uh, either one, any one of those three guys can get that on on their own. This was forty seven and a half earlier, and I played it all the way. Rick, I, just, I just stumbled into, in, gold, I stumbled, no into I stumbled into a gold. I stumbled into a gold. I stumbled into a gold mine. Uh, all right, oh, 20, no. 24 and a half. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, Rick, I like Marquis. No Brown. way this is up by the time we all get in there. It, it's, yeah. no, this cannot be up. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to keep playing, Chief. I'm just going to mix a couple I mean, of guys. Oh, wow. I can't. But this I can't play any more than the hundred. So. Everyone get in that. This, this is, is free. This is it was not free. This yeah. is 47 and a, a half. And I was gonna tell people that's a good call up. But you don't have that, to do this a, anymore. That's a good call up, Rick. Chief, this has me wondering if any other games are like this. Uh so I'm gonna stat take a quick scroll out. through the through the yeah, statute. It is 47 and a half. Oh, well, it was 28, 24 and a half on my screen. <laughs> I know. No, that's what I'm telling you. But play it, play it, Chief. Because I max mine out. Maybe after you play it, it, it drops it for some reason. It's a it's a feature, not a bug. Yeah, I mean, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. You I'm, know what? You, oof. Yeah, this. I this mean, is I'm good. in here. I'm in it, it for some reason. I got it at twenty eight and a half fantasy points. Oh yeah, because I went up. I'm in here, Chief. I got it. <laughs> oh my. Oh, that was oh, the first wow. half. That's why, Chief. I was in the first half. Okay. Scratch I was that. like, no, but I mean, well, I'll still play that. <laughs> I mean, but I still no though. All right. So here's the real one. All right. So that was a little that was a little silly. Thanks, Devin, for the go on that. So here's the real play is the 47 and a half. This is too low in this game. Now you get a double up, right? So I like Marquise Brown, Lockett or Metcalf, and then Walker, because I think Walker is gonna go bananas. It's PPR. It's DraftKings scoring without the bonus on Monkey Knife Fight. So you could play, right? You can play your main at 4750. You can go half of that and get a triple up. And then you go a little bit lower for 56 and a half. You just ladder the fantasy points play all the way around. So go get this 47 and a half for the double up. Risk a little bit less on the 5150 and ladder it all the way up to the 4X at 5650. The no defense game of the week. Some of the other games where they actually play defense have higher fantasy point totals for guys that aren't even involved in the game where it's a lot harder to figure out where the points are coming from. So I, I stumbled across this and I love this quite a bit. Um, so this is this is what I wanted to point out on Monkey Knife Fight. And I also want to point out go first half. Uh, since I'm now uh, reasonably invested in that, no big deal. Uh, <laughs> but definitely uh, like a full game as well. Uh, but go first half as well. <laughs> I got a little too excited. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. You got me. On yeah, I mean, listen. You had, you had me excited. I was like, wait a minute. Where is the twenty four? But yeah, we're cool. But still, the forty seven and a half. Brown, Brown, Lockett, Metcalf, Brown, Metcalf. Like, you're, you're gonna. You should be fine. Yeah. Like ladder Brown, up, Brown will probably have at least eighty yards receiving. Ladder it up all the way, right? Do the two, do the three, do the four. I think you probably hit at least two of them. And I, I don't know. That four seems pretty attainable, too, in my opinion. So I uh, wanted to point that I, you out. Know, Brent, and, and now that I'm looking at it, the uh, the touchdown one – no, no, not the touchdown one. The Yeah, touchdown suit, but the receptions prop may be good, too. Because if you take Rondell Moore, who's probably going to catch six or seven balls, yeah, right? Lock it. Lock it right. more, bro. Yeah, you take Lockett, who should catch another six or seven. Like, you're getting really close. And Lockett's, you know, 
Rondale's a guy that can catch eight. Brown is a guy that can t- catch, I think, six or seven. And then you're hoping Lockett has one of those nine catch games. And if he does that, you're running to you're running to the bank. And it's not even a lot. You get one extra reception for a three X chief. That's what I'm going for. That's um, yeah. I'll take the three X. And even twenty one. Can these guys all get eight receptions? No question, right? So like even that twenty one fifty is certainly in play too. So I think yeah. you can even ladder this one. I'm going to ladder this one up uh, after we get off the show. But I think with more Brown and Lockett, that looks pretty juicy. Oh yeah, the no Absolutely. the no defense game and these props are just a little bit too low. So there's another one for you on Monkey Knife Fight. Uh, spreading the love a little bit around the sites. I know we talk prize picks a lot because they put the lines out first. They have generally softer lines. They don't adjust. That's where I do a lot of playing. Um, but some of the other sites, you got to shop around and find the best lines. And uh, hopefully you guys were able to get in on that. Uh, Chief, anything else you want to talk about? I think we got just about everything we can get on a Tuesday before the sports books even have these props out. Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm expecting the, the field goal props to come out. I Look, guys, you don't have to overthink this. It's not about hitting it every week. It's about hitting it mostly every week. Don't give up on Carlson. Don't give up on uh, on McPherson. Don't give up on Young Way Koo. Don't give up on uh, on uh, Graham Gano. Like th- those are your guys. I mean, those are my like key four guys. Now, if Harbaugh's going to start kicking field goals with Justin Tucker, I'll happily play Tucker over one and a half every week. I just I've only seen Harbaugh do this one time all season. I can't trust him to kick field goals just yet. Um, there's another team that's actually been kicking a fair amount of field goals this season. Uh, one other team. Oh, the Jets with uh, Greg DeLay and Brett Maurer with Dow. They've been kicking field goals too. So just keep those guys in rotation, mix and match, and uh, you'll be good to go. All right, that's going to do it for the week six edition of the Prop Shop. Hopefully you guys were able to get on some of these lines before they move. And, you know, I haven't been keeping track track, but I would say at least like 75% of these have moved by – Friday and pretty much all of them have moved by Sunday that we generally like to talk about. Uh, so get on them early, often, and uh, at least get the closing line value. If the prop doesn't go through, you have that to hang your head on for the day. Uh, that's going to do it for the week six show. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Click that like button on the way out, please. We greatly appreciate that on YouTube. Spread the word. Join Chiefs Prop Shop over on the Road Grinders Discord. Uh, it is all for the low, low price of free 50. Uh, you get access to uh, very smart people, uh, some even smarter than Will and I in terms of props and betting and things like that, posting their slips from all the other sites. Uh, make sure to join that. It's a great little community. Chief is built over there. I dropped some nuggets every one in there. I threw my uh, scores and odds. Josh Jacobs over 18 and a half in there for everybody. And I think a, a few people rode that along with me and were able to cash on that. So uh, thank you for following me in on that one. And let's have some fun this week. For Chief, I'm Britt. Thanks for watching and listening. We out you.